Hey everybody, it's How To Tuesday, and the title of this podcast is How You Can Be a Rock Star Fishing Guide. And before you just turn this off and decide, oh, I don't really want to be a rock star fishing guide, I don't want to be any kind of fishing guide, I want to be the guy on the front of the boat, whatever. Everything that we're going to talk about today is very, very, very applicable to many areas in your life. If you're in any sort of sales, if, you're, if you um, are trying to have a good... Um, trip with your family, if you're trying to have a good outing with somebody that you like, your friend, whatever, these are good uh, kind of protocols to go for. And what we're going to talk about is expectations, questions that you can ask previous to the trip in the booking phase so that you can make sure that you have the information necessary so that you can deliver the trip that your customer wants. Now, a wise man, very wise man once said that all upset is from unmet expectations. All right. So anytime that anybody gets upset, it's because they had an expectation that wasn't met. Okay. If you have an expectation that wasn't met, there was some sort of communication problem in advance because maybe you had an unrealistic expectation. Maybe you had an expectation that just wasn't going to happen that day and you set yourself up for failure. As a fishing guide, a hunting guide, a whitewater guide, any sort of adventure, anybody that does anything with hospitality, you're trying to show somebody a good time. You don't want to set yourself up for failure. So let's talk a little bit about how you might do that in the booking in the booking phase. So um one thing that uh that I always like to do, if somebody calls up, they they're saying, "Hey, uh I've heard good things about you. I would like to go fishing with you." Okay. This is your opportunity to ask some good questions instead of just marking them down and saying, "Okay, I'll see you on on uh in May May the 4th." Um this is the opportunity to ask some questions. Okay, great. Awesome. I'd love to fish with you too. What kind of fishing would you like to do? Because here we go. Maybe you're a flats guide. Maybe this guy just heard that you were a great fishing guide. He really wants to fish offshore, but he didn't tell you that. So you don't want him to show up on the day of the trip and you're in a skiff and he's expecting a, a 36. Uh, you want to ask these questions. What kind of fishing would you like to do? Oh, well, I'd like to do, uh, you know, permit bonefish, tarpon, whatever. That'd be great. Okay, cool. So, so you need to ask a few other questions. What kind of tackle would you like to use? Are you a fly fisherman or do you just want to uh, fish uh, with with bait or are you just trying to catch one? What's what, what, can we, what can we talk about here that can give me a little bit more information so that I can, first of all, decide that if you're going to come at the right time of the year, Secondly, if you and I are going to be a good match. And third, if I can deliver what you want. Okay. So maybe the guy says, well, listen, I'm going to be bringing my four kids and I'd really like to go out and um, catch, you know, whatever. Okay. Well, if you have a skiff, now you are obviously not the best choice. First of all, you're not going to get uh, six people on a skiff. And so now you have the information where you're not going to be a good match, but you can still be a rock star fishing guide because you are going to give this person your friend's name that has a bay boat, does family fishing. He, this is right up his alley. This is going to be perfect. You're going to give, you're going to pass this trip off to your friend. You're going to be a rock star fishing guide because you are going to set this person up after asking a few questions with exactly the right person that's going to do exactly the kind of fishing that this person wants. He's going to go away super happy. He's going to be very favorable when your name comes up. Oh, man, that guy gave me a great recommendation. Now I fish with this guy every single year. It is so awesome. And then when my kids get a little older and they like to do the kind of fishing that, that you do, he's going to come back to you when they want to go sight fishing for bonefish or permit or whatever. So the, the, the deal is that you ask a couple of questions. So one of the things that you could ask someone is, hey, do you have kind of an ideal day that you would that 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 you're looking for? And this is a great opportunity for somebody to say, listen, I've fished all over the place. I've never caught a permit. I would like to catch a permit. Okay. Are you a fly fisherman? Yes, I'm a fly fisherman. Well, okay. It, are you dead set on catching one on fly, catching the first one on fly? Either yes or no, and that is going to take this charter in many different directions. 
Because if catching a permit is the primary objective, okay, there, there are easier ways to catch one than on fly. And so you can talk about, is it more important to catch one on fly or is it more important to catch a permit? Because if we're just going to try to catch a permit, pretty sure we have a much higher likelihood of doing so with a live crab. And I'm okay with either. I do both. Maybe you're a fishing guy that does both. Maybe you don't want to fish a live crab. Maybe it's only fly fishing. And again, you can pass this person off kindly, gently, and professionally to someone who does exactly what he, um, he wants to do. So that's a good opportunity. One of the things where you can ask some questions, one time I had a, a customer who called me. He said he wanted to go bone fishing, um, and he was a fly fisherman, and that was great. So I just booked him. I thought we had planned everything, but we, we fished in the morning, and we got a whole bunch of shots. I thought the fishing was really, really good. We didn't catch anything. Probably got 30 shots. That's a lot for the Florida Keys. And then we were going to eat some lunch, and we kind of drift up close to the mangroves. He looks down, and there's a whole bunch of snappers there. He's like, oh, my gosh, what about these fish right here? Can I catch those? And I said, sure, just drop your fly in there. And he starts catching snappers. And he's like, man, this is awesome. Why haven't we been doing this all morning? And I said, well, I thought you said you wanted to go bone fishing. And he said, well, yeah. I mean, isn't that what we were doing right now? And I said, well, right now we're snapper fishing. This morning we were bone fishing. He said, well, what's the difference? I said, this morning we were actually fishing for the fish, the bone fish, which is really hard to catch. And we're not going to catch a lot of them. You could catch a hundred of these things. He goes, man, I just want to catch fish. I thought going bone fishing was just going in a boat like this. I thought this was a bonefish boat. Okay, no problem. The guy, you know, he'd never been to the Florida Keys before. He's never, probably never even been on the ocean. He doesn't know. And that's fine. Had I asked a little bit more, a few more questions, I could have asked, well, how many fish, you know, do you want more action? Are you looking for a, a certain size fish? Or is there a way that you're trying to catch these fish? All of these questions that you can ask will lead to more and more information that you will get so that you can do the best job to deliver exactly what this customer wants. Now, when I think about a rock star fishing guide, I think about somebody who is constantly booked, whose customers love them so much that when they get off the boat with them this year, they have already booked the time for next year. Now, is this guy the one that wins the most tournaments? Maybe. Sometimes they are. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes they've never won a tournament. Sometimes they've never fished in a tournament. A guy like this uh, with, has an incredible reputation and is booked all the time. And sometimes, is he the one that catches the biggest bonefish or the most bonefish or, or uh, the most grand slams? Yes, sometimes he is. But oftentimes he's not. Oftentimes he's the guy that listens to his customer and does what they want to do. And what's important about communicating is communicating far enough in advance so that you can do a few things. First of all, to make sure that you're getting your people to come at the right time of the year. So if somebody says that all they want is the biggest tarpon that they can imagine, 100-pound tarpon, whatever. Well, 100-pound tarpon are in the keys at a certain time of the year where you're going to have the best likelihood of catching one. And other times of the year, the likelihood is going to go way down. So you want to book that person at exactly the right time of year. Asking questions is the way to do it and to talk about expectations. If someone comes and talks uh, or, or uh, wants to go tarpon fishing with you, and let's just say the most tarpon you've ever caught in a day is seven, okay? And you start talking to someone and you're like, well, what? where do you normally go go fishing. Well, we usually go in Louisiana and man, we have these days where we catch a hundred fish a piece. I'm sure you do. That is awesome. And then you could just gently kind of say, well, do you realize maybe that tarpon fishing in the Keys, we don't get those kind of numbers. We may catch a fish that's 130 pounds, but that may be the only one of the day. And somebody might say, oh, really? I thought it was just going to be like the red fishing. No, sir, it's not going to be like that. We're not going to catch 100 tarpon. We might, I mean, if you wanted to catch 100 fish, 
there are other fish that we may be able to go for. We could catch snappers. We could catch Jack Cravels. We could catch um, sharks. We could catch a lot of other fish that are much easier to catch that lend themselves to catching more. And there are techniques that we can do that lend themselves to catching more. And you may talk to this person and they may start to give you the, the, the information that you need to understand that tarpon is important, but they don't want to sit there all day trying to catch two fish. What they want to do is they would love to catch a tarpon, but they really want action. So what you can do with that information is you can say, okay, cool, we're going to fish the mornings for tarpon. And we're not going to put in much more than two or three hours. And if it's really good, we're going to stay. But if it's not good, we're going to go fish for other things. And I'm going to have the right bait on board. I'm going to have the right rods on board. I'm going to have everything dialed in in the previous charters up to this. I'm going to be looking for different things and making mental notes or physical notes on what I'm seeing. And I'm going to get prepared for this trip. Like you are prepared for everything. And you can look at your calendar and say, okay, I got a, a guy that only wants to fly fish for permit coming up. So all week this week, week. I'm going to be looking for all these areas that I'm going to uh, fish for permit. I'm going to make a few pit stops here and there and just, just pole flat, make sure that I'm, I'm putting in my time um, so that I'm doing, doing a little homework, right? So that when that guy comes, you're going to be able to deliver exactly what he says. So another example might be uh, if someone says, hey, I'm, I'm coming down and uh, I'm, going to bring my, I'm going to bring my daughter or my son and uh, this trip, I just want it to be all about, I just want it to be all about them. I don't care if I catch a fish. I just want them to have a really good time. Okay. So you could say, no problem. I know how to do that. And you could stop there. Or you might be able to ask a couple more questions and say, well, tell me a little bit about your son or daughter. How old are they? Um, well, they're, they're 15. Okay. Awesome. Have they done much fishing before? Yeah. Really into fishing. Loves fishing. Have they fished in salt water? Nope, never fished in salt water. Okay, so would do you in, do you think that they would be more interested in a certain species, a certain type of fishing, or do you think they would be interested in catching just fish all the time, uh, fish all day, as many fish as we could catch, no matter what they are? Oh, well, yeah, we're we're definitely here to catch fish. We want to catch whatever. Okay. And are, is there a particular type of tackle that your son wants to do? Oh, yeah. He only wants to fly fish. Or he, no, there's no particular tackle. He's never used a bait caster before, but he can use a spinning rod really well. Whatever. You're getting these pieces of information that are going to help you to deliver the exact right trip for your customer. And in my opinion, that's a rock star fishing guide. A rock star fishing guide is someone who spends the time to communicate with their customer and figures out whether this is going to be a good match. If it's not going to be a good match, gently pass them on to someone who is a better match for them. If it is going to be a good match, show up with plan A, B, C, and D because of the communication that you've had. And you may find out that the person that you just booked is all, all he wants to do is fly fish for permit. And you may say, Hey, uh, would you, if the tarpon fishing was really good and the permit fishing was kind of slow, would you want to kind of move over to the tarpon? Nope. All I want to do is catch a permit. Okay. Now, you know, now, you know, and you could even say, so you're telling me if there's a big daisy chain in school of tarpon around, you wouldn't want to just throw at one of those. No, I've done that before, and as soon as I hooked the tarpon, then the permit st showed up, and that was my best shot of the week, and I missed it because I was hooked up to a tarpon. Listen, I've caught a bunch of tarpon. Don't need to catch any more tarpon. Don't want to catch any bonefish. I'm just here for the permit. Great. Awesome. Now you know. And you can either deliver that trip for that person, or you can say, you know what? I think my buddy is going to be exactly the guy you're looking for. That is all he wants to do, right? And you'll be a rock star that way because you're giving an amazing um, uh, referral as well. And so that guy's going to be very happy with you and he is going to uh, probably come fishing with you later at another time for another species if that's what he wants to do. So this is what we're, this is what it's all about in my opinion. And you'll get better and better at it as you start to think about these things on a daily basis. You're going to have somebody book for a week 
and the weather's going to turn. And now you're going to be so good at this that you're going to be able to call your customer either either the night before or at the dock, and you're going to say, hey, listen, the weather's really rough, and we can continue to go and do whatever it is that you wanted to do, permit, fly fishing for permit or stuff, but we're going to have a really hard time seeing those right now. But if you guys just wanted to catch some fish, we could go over here to the mangroves. There's redfish, snook, baby tarpon. All these fish are under the mangroves. We don't need to see them. I'm pretty sure we can have a great day. I'm up for whatever. I'll go pull around for the permit, but I just want to make sure that you know that there are other options, that you know that um, that there are those options and we can go do it. So you tell me what you want to do and put the ball in their court. And they say, listen, I'd rather I'd rather catch no permit and fish for them all day than go over there and do that. Okay, awesome. No problem. Let's go. But could be the other way. They could be thinking, man, we're just staring into empty water and we could be catching fish. I'd rather catch fish. Okay, so now you know. And you can go, and instead of bringing a, a disappointed customer back to the dock, because you can't take care, you can't uh, control the weather. And the weather is always going to be uh, against you or, or a, a challenging factor. It's not always going to be super nice. And sometimes when it's super nice, that's not even the best conditions for whatever your customer wants to go for. Uh, so you're obviously going to be challenged with the weather all the time. But with proper communication, you can still deliver the best possible day under those conditions for that person. And the best possible day for one person might be just going for that fish with the outside possibility that you're going to get one good shot when the sun, when the sun comes from behind a cloud and there's a permit 30 feet in front of you. That's what they want to do. Somebody else is like, man, forget that. That sounds horrible. It's boring. I don't want to stand on the front of a boat for nine hours to get one shot. If we can go over here and catch snappers, I'd much rather do that. Okay, cool. Well, the only way you're going to know that is through communication. So I don't want to beat a horse, beat a dead horse, but clarifying the expectations, talking about them in advance, and then showing up prepared to try to give your person the best possible day that you can will make you a rock star fishing guide. It will make you a rock star salesman. It will make you a rock star in uh, as, as a dad getting ready to take your family somewhere, find out what's important to everyone. Know what the number one thing is and get that done. That's the important thing. It's not necessarily about, you know, where you go or what you do even. Maybe, maybe you know, it's just about being together or it's just about, you know, I don't know, having a nice day. Where another day, it might be all about making it to the summit of that hill. And the only thing that's important is that we get to the summit of that hill. Okay, well, there's a lot. That's a lot different. Just go out and have a nice day or actually make it to the summit of that hill. Actually catch a tarpon. Uh, fly fish for permit. Like all of these things are slightly different than one another. And they tend to take your day in many different directions. But... A rock star fishing guide, a rock star guide of any kind, is going to find out exactly what his customer wants and do the very best to deliver that to them. And if you can do that, you're going to be booked for life. All right. That's how to Tuesday today, how to be a rock star fishing guide. It begins and ends with communication. And remember, all upset is from unmet expectations. So all you got to do is get those expectations out of the way, understand what they are, and communicate about them. Are they unrealistic? Are they ridiculous? Or is there a way that you can meet these expectations? That's it. If you can do that, you're going to be awesome. All right. We'll see you next week. Out to Tuesday. Later. Later.